uh, Mr. Chair, Loretta Golden, Director, Lachua County's Victim Services and Rape Crisis Center. I was here, I didn't even know if I would say anything, but I came because I wanted to show support of the program in the Sheriff's Office. And also to say that um, I came to the county in 1982. I was 29 years old. And I know there are a lot of people who kind of wonder about my age. Well, they don't have to wonder anymore. Now we know you're but 33. That's it. <laughs> But my grandma told me once, she said, the only way you don't get old, you die young. So I'm glad to be here. There is a fundamental difference between the two programs, uh, the one in the sheriff's office and the program that you have funded for 30 some years. The victims who are victimized in this city and in this county need a place that they can go that are not part of a system. Programs that are located within law enforcement agencies are considered system-based agencies, victim service programs. They are designed to perform and to work within the structure of that agency. Everyone who is the victim of a crime will not report it. But the fact is, any one of us and anyone that might be listening right now can be the victim of a crime, regardless of where you live and regardless of what side of the street you may live on. I've been accused of many things while I've been employed with the county. Most of them I can't tell you, but there are two that stand out in my mind. Someone once said that I was trying to create a monopoly on victim services in Alachua County. And that was because I decided that I wanted to have an advocate in our homeless shelter, St. Francis House, because homeless people represent our most vulnerable citizens, but are often the most victimized. And so I decided there's an unmet need there because they do not utilize services, they do not report, and they do not take advantage of what's available to them. So I approached the Office of the Attorney General responsible for VOCA funding, and we were successful in getting an advocate in St. Francis House. The other thing that I was accused of was being old, outdated, and antiquated. Well. Some of that is true. The bottom line is, I will never provide services to anyone based on the side of the street they stay on. I will never provide services based on whether or not someone decides to report that crime. And any effort to combine services, there is an impact because it ultimately results in more work on that advocate. Do you know what it might feel like to have somebody call you three o'clock in the morning when you have to get out of the comfort of your bed and leave when it is as cold as it can get here in Gainesville, when it's so cold your car door is frozen shut? That's what I went through. <clears throat> and when you get to the hospital, there's a 15-year-old in there who's been beaten about the head so brutally that it does something to you when you look at her. Or when you go out and you're called to respond to the crime scene, you have no idea where you're going, but you're driving around in a neighborhood and you're trying to find an address, and you're hoping that the police is still there when you get there. That's what an advocate goes through. And that's what we might be looking at in taking on that additional workload. And then there's also that fear and that danger that is associated with perhaps driving someone all the way to the Orlando International Airport to help her get away from the abuser. And both of us looking back until we got out of Gainesville because we didn't know if he was following us. But I believe, I don't have a prepared presentation, don't have charts, any of those things, but I believe that if I speak from the heart, that people will listen with the heart as well as with the head. And the minister, the pastor this morning said something that, that, that really stuck with me because I was here this morning. He said that although we have differences, we would do the right thing. And so, 
I believe that you will do the right thing, and ultimately, um, we will do what you tell us to do. And if I'm here in the direction it's given to Amara Warren and Mr. Reed, and it's passed down to me, I will carry out your directions. I have a tremendous amount of report for Laura Knudsen and Sheriff Darnell. Um, Laura, as she said, was with the county program when I started. She was my mentor. I say to people all the time, I learned from the best. Sheriff Darnell was in patrol when I first met her. And when the impact of this work, the stress from doing this caused me to have a heart attack. They were both right there for me. And they belong to a very small group of people that I call friends. But Commissioner Pinkinson, a few years ago, you, you honored us with the visit to the Rape Crisis Center. And we had an opportunity to talk to you about how this work impacts us and what it does to us. Um, to take on more and to ask more of us somehow will, I believe, diminish the quality of what we do. Our citizens need a place that they can go where it does not matter if they reported the crime or not. They should have that choice and that control. I don't want to report, but the services are still there. A mother who is sending her child to the University of Florida should be able to call and say, are there counseling services available? I can't afford to pay but can my daughter still get quality services, counseling, so that she can deal with the rape or the child sexual abuse? And finally, I want to say that uh, the 20 some years that I've been here has been a journey for me. I like to say that I've grown up with the county. It has been a journey of learning and helping victims to become empowered and to take back control of their lives. But it has also been a journey for me in that I have learned to take back control of my life. As a survivor of child sexual abuse, I can remember the time when standing before you is not something I would have done. But there is a time when it is appropriate to speak up. And there is a time when it is appropriate to be quiet. This is the time to speak up in terms of services for victims in this community. All of us do, I believe, an excellent job in working with the very minimal that we have, finding a way to do more with less. And I, I don't see that there would be this tremendous saving in trying to combine anything. We coordinate services. We do not serve the same victims. But if you are a victim service provider, there are certain services you must provide in order to be a victim service provider. The county's program, when people can't do something, they say call the county program. Now, there's no question in my mind, we're the best. But other programs also provide a very valuable service in this community, and the Sheriff's Office is one of them. Um, I'd just like to add that those services that are currently offered in the city, the Gainesville Police Department, we partner with the city to provide those services so that no victim who wants services will go unserved. And I'd be glad to take any questions that you may have of me as well. Thank you. Any questions? Ms. Golden, I just want to tell you that I hope that everybody that ever tunes into Channel 12 gets the opportunity to watch what you just said. Um, you are absolutely, I'm getting chills, um, you embody what, what we would like to demonstrate to everybody in the county, you know, what county employees are all about. Um, it's obvious you are very passionate and that you are trying very hard to make a difference for those people who, who unfortunately need your, your services. In a perfect world, you wouldn't be needed, and unfortunately, we're not there. And I, I just hope that, that, that people can, if Mark can cue that up, just to let people see, you know, just uh, here's one of, one of the many people that, that work in the county, and here's what they're all about. 
uh, I think that you are truly a credit to this to this organization, and thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah.